Coming up, Jonathan visits the Tennessee Aquarium to learn how they are saving freshwater fish. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. Downtown Chattanooga. Along the banks of the Tennessee River is the Tennessee Aquarium, hundreds of miles from the nearest ocean. Over the years, we've done a bunch of segments on aquaria, and most of them focus on ocean life. But here at the Tennessee Aquarium, they have one of the world's largest collections of freshwater life. So let's go check it out. I meet Meredith Roberts, Director of Hospitality and Marketing, who will be showing me around today. We take the escalator all the way to the top of the building. So we're in the middle of the Appalachian, or Appalachian, whatever you choose, Co okay. Forest. So pretend that you've just gone on a very strenuous two, three mile hike, and now you are surrounded by native plants that you can find along the Appalachian Trail. Um, right here in our backyard in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Wow. So it really is a forest under glass. You have blooms, you have trees, you have river otters. We're gonna get to see our North American river otter soon, but this area really tells the story of water going from a droplet that starts in the mountains and then how that impacts throughout river journey our freshwater ecosystems that eventually lead to the ocean. Huh. So when we talk about conservation, you know, ocean conservation is important, Conservation in freshwater streams and rivers is equally as important and actually helps out our oceans, which is really neat. Our North American river otters, they like to play hard. They love to be out and then they like to have their rest time, just like we all do. So we're able to shift them on and off exhibit so they have that time, but then they're also engaging and doing all kinds of fun behavior. Next, we head down a floor to learn more about local river life. So when you look at the southeastern United States, um, it is one of the most biodiverse areas in the entire world in terms of freshwater species. I mean, literally, look at the number of fish species that are in this specific area. So 238 right in our backyard. And so it's really important for us to talk about that because when you, and what you don't see here are different river systems that come up. So those river systems come right down into the Gulf of Mexico, into these oceans and into these saltwater waterways, but it's important for us to talk about that conservation story. Why a darter that may be this small? Or a lake sturgeon? What, why those are important, what's going on with them, and how we can repopulate them. I love this exhibit. It's a, it's a great exhibit. For us, while we love having the saltwater site too, it's really great to be able to do an exhibit that focuses on our conservation work, focuses on those freshwater species, and hopefully gets families, gets children, gets adults excited about it. Um, makes them walking away wanting to be environmental stewards and going forward and thinking about that when they're interacting with these, these rivers and these streams out in the natural environment, which is really fun. Hmm. One of the most unusual local fish is the lake sturgeon. We have two different opportunities to, you know, get up close and engage with wildlife here. And lake sturgeon are really fun, so they're prehistoric. Um, this is really one of our conservation success stories. Um, when we started, I believe, at either 1998 or 2000, we started a lake sturgeon reintroduction program. So they were heavily farmed for caviar. Um, right. Since that time, we've reintroduced over 300,000 lake sturgeon. 300,000? 300, over, over a quarter million. Do they like all these people petting them or I mean they seem like they're hanging just out of reach. So, <laughs> so for us when we designed this this touch tank you yep. know the idea is that it's up to them so right. that's why those spaces are there if they prefer Ooh, not so to be touched lovely. they know where to go so it's definitely by choice <laughs> and you know our, our guest services team talks about we say it's a two finger touch so this young lady's doing a great job of yep. representing it but it's just along their backs mm -hmm. and again you have some that are like no I'm good <laughs> I, I need a nap time. Three miles from the aquarium is the Tennessee Aquarium Conservation Institute, where they're busy raising baby local fish. 
The tangerine darter is only found in cool streams in the southern Appalachian Mountains and has been threatened by habitat loss. The Tennessee Aquarium is helping them make a comeback. Volunteers carry buckets of water containing fish on their backs. They hike up into the woods with their precious cargo. They slowly work their way up the streams, releasing just a few fish in each little pool to maximize how many will survive. They also raise and release brook trout and sturgeon. Baby sturgeon resist predators with sharp, bumpy skin. But when they get a little older, they're silky smooth enough for a touch tank. But a river has more than fish. The Tennessee Aquarium has more turtles than you can count. When you think about biodiversity, especially southeastern U.S., you think about freshwater species. Obviously, we're an aquarium, we have a lot of fish, right. but we have so much more than that. So we actually have the largest collection of freshwater turtle species for public viewing in the United States. Wow. Um, we have some turtles that they're critically endangered. We have a turtle nursery that you're mm -hmm. gonna get to see in just a second that has amazing species from all over the world. Some of the adult turtles have to share their home with a bunch of alligators. But everyone seems to get along. We head on over to the turtle nursery, and Meredith shows off dozens of rare and endangered animals they're breeding. They're cute, but I can't really tell them all apart. There are just too many. Down another level, we reach the tanks where they keep the really big freshwater fish. There are arapaimas from the Amazon, one of the largest freshwater fish reaching three meters. They have freshwater stingrays from Southeast Asia. Blue catfish that are locals. And my personal favorite, the paddlefish, also local which opens its mouth wide to filter feed like a basking shark. Across the courtyard, there's another whole building to explore, containing the saltwater species. Again, we start at the top where they have lemurs. Now you might be asking, why does an aquarium have lemurs? I have no idea, but they are cute. Nearby, there's a touch tank exhibit called Stingray Bay, where guests can pet a stingray. And a refrigerated exhibit containing a bunch of Gentoo and macaroni penguins. There's a Pacific Northwest wave tank with anemones and sea stars sloshing around just like they do in Puget Sound. The largest attraction is the secret reef exhibit of more than 600,000 gallons, containing sharks, sea turtles, and tons of fish. So now you are in our undersea cavern. I love this. Cave diving say, is my thing. There you go. So you have fish in here from Gulf of Mexico. 
everything from sergeant majors, which I know is a diver you love, right? They attack me. Yeah, they're, they're great. <laughs> um, and queen triggerfish, divers favorites, to sand tiger sharks and sand bar sharks. We have two spotted eagle rays. I like that we can look up too. This is cool. So we have divers in here that scrub daily, and so it's a way for, for guests to get to see the work they do. Um, and then again, to get to see something different every time you come. So from a, from a perspective of visitation, you know, members can come back and they may not see a gray angelfish this visit, but they may see that spade fish and they may see one of our cow nose rays the next visit. And so it's just a really fun way to, to have a different experience multiple times. Nearby in the boneless beauties exhibits, I meet a giant Japanese spider crab. And a bunch of different species of jellies. Technically, they aren't fish. But my favorite animal in this building is a cephalopod named beaver. Have you met a giant Pacific octopus before? I have. Okay. So I have a feeling that you're going to be blown away by this one. Um, as you, I'm sure, know, giant Pacific octopuses are so smart. So three hearts, average intelligence of a toddler, and each one truly has a unique personality. Giant Pacific octopuses are quite intelligent. Sometimes they're in the mood to hide. But Beaver's feeling gregarious today and comes out to give us a show. He climbs all over his tank and seems quite curious about the camera staring back at him. Fortunately for me, I get an invitation to go behind the scenes and meet him up close. Senior aquarist Danny Alexander is responsible for beaver's care. And he can tie you up with these huge suction cups real quick. So uh, sometimes we have to get a little bit aggressive. So it, it's better if you stick to the smaller suction cups if yep. you want him to grab a hold of you. Yeah. The smaller ones can't. Ooh. Now I can't even get him off of me. Here, <laughs> here. Each suction cup of an adult um, giant Pacific octopus can hold 35 pounds. Wow. Yeah, each suction cup can hold that. Also, they basically have nine brains, a central brain, and then he has like these satellite neur neural centers that control each arm. So that, that's why he can, whatever suction cup you touch, yep. he can manipulate and control that one suction cup. And he's got like 2, 000, more than 2,000 suction cups. It's so funny, like, he's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> the Tennessee Aquarium is an icon of Chattanooga. Not only is it an impressive facility with a huge number of amazing exhibits, but their programs at the Conservation Institute are making a big difference in the restoration of important local freshwater species. A great conservation effort for the blue world. Hey you guys, check out that video. It's a really good one. Also, this one's pretty good too. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>